All right. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This is fantastic. It's a pleasure to see everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. It is uh, 9.01 and we are ready to go here. So just want to make sure that we've got everyone on the line here with us. Where are we at right now? Okay, good stuff, good stuff. <clears throat> Fantastic, everyone, and welcome. My name is Ray Vaza. It is a pleasure to have you here with us this morning. It's going to be an action-packed day. We've got a, a fantastic lineup here, and no doubt that you're all here this morning because of your interest in the commercial real estate space, and that's what we're all about today. So Jamie and Leslie have put together a fantastic panel for us to be able to listen, learn. There's going to be a section for Q&A. It's going to be a really, really fun day. I'm going to be your MC for, for today, and I'm really excited about it. I'm just getting my, uh, <clears throat> my comfortability here, everyone, so thanks very much. I want to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items, and then we're going to have our first guest come up and be able to join us. And uh, housekeeping items, we've got three breaks going on today. Our first break is going to be at 1030, so at that point in time, we'll take a bit of a pause. We've got about 15 minutes. Everyone can step away, get themselves refreshed, and then we'll rejoin at the uh, 1045 timeline. We're gonna be taking a hour lunch today. That's gonna to happen from 12 until 1 p.m. So everyone can go ahead and take their break at that point in time. We then have one more afternoon one, which is gonna be at the 3 p.m. So we'll take a three to a 3.15. And then at the 4 p.m., we're gonna be breaking into a Q&A period for our panelists. So those are some of the highlights for the day and what we've got lined up here for you. A couple other housekeeping items. In terms of questions, we've got a couple of uh, a couple of options down there on the bottom of your screen, everyone. So you're going to see an option for chat. You're also going to see an option for the Q&A. And if you have a question at any point in time, please go ahead and drop it in the Q&A. Uh, we're going to be able to go ahead and address with the individual speakers. We can also go back um, at the end of the day for the panelist section there. So it's going to give us an opportunity to really engage with these particular individuals. So just drop it in the Q&A. I hope everyone's seeing that. And I hope everyone can hear me this morning. Um, I hope I'm coming through loud and clear. So with that, I'd like to kick it off with our, our very, very first uh, speaker this morning. And, and, and some of them we're really, really excited to be able to talk to you about. So let me just get my, uh, my notes going on here. So this particular speaker right here, he first invested $1,000 when he was 11 years old. That is Oh, there's the message going up from Brian right there. That is just amazing to think about. And it was a land development deal with his parents. Uh, he then turned around and took $5,000 uh, when he was 14 and continued to invest in private lending. He purchased his first six unit building at the age of 14 in late 2019. He's earning monthly interest payments right now at the age of 15. I mean, that is just fantastic. Uh, he's currently have invested money with his parents. Future plans are to be able to sell the property, work on a bigger deal, start a business when he graduates high school. Like unbelievable ambition. So ladies and gentlemen, our first guest this morning, please go ahead and welcome to the stage an amazing investor to kick us off. Thanks, Ray. So um, yeah, I'm the first speaker today. I'm going to present my... Uh, little presentation I have set up here. Who are you? Um, so I, uh, I go by Teenage Investor. It was my mom's idea. Um, and I invest with her and Jamie and their, uh, their property business. So, um, yeah, as Ray said, I started investing when I was 11 years old. Um, I made my first investment when I was... 11 with a thousand dollars. It was like all of my life savings, um, and a syndicate mortgage on a land development deal. Um, and then I saved up 5,000 bit more in up until 2019. And I invested that with my mom's friend in private lending. And then I just took that out and invested 6,000 with my mom to help with her properties and to give me more interest. Um, last December, or I think it was like October, we, uh, we bought a six unit building and we took possession in it in December and I, I was 14 and it's been a bit of a rocky start, but I mean, it's a good learning experience. Um, so my real estate experience is I've worked with my parents and all the rentals. We started off, what was it? Your first six units? 
we did all on our own and it was terrible um i i hated working we worked like every hour that we could after every day after school everything for like three four hours we didn't get back to late at night every weekend i absolutely hated it and i never wanted to do it i just wanted to like get it done and over with and then she kept buying buildings and i i despised it um and then as I was working last summer, in summer of 2019, I was working with her construction crews and all of her other properties in like Waterford and everything. And I started to like gain an interest in just like being around the properties and doing all the work, doing the demo, which was fun, putting stuff together. And my whole family has been like in the construction business. So I started to gain interest in kind of what I was doing and what they were doing. And I thought it was pretty fun getting up for work every day. And then... In 2019, I had to help my mom do her taxes for like two weeks, which sucked. And I started to notice like how much money she was making and the interest in percent she was getting back from all of her properties. So I thought it was maybe a good idea to be a bit more interested and look into it. And then, um, yeah, so once I realized how much money she was making, I decided that maybe I should like give real estate a bit of a chance. Because I, I had already kind of gotten an interest in it from working on it. Um, so then we met, uh, I think he was 17 at the time. We met a, another teenager that was on Global News. And we went to their uh, apartment building. We met him and his parents. They were nice people. And he explained how he had to get a mortgage to buy his own property because he was under the age of 18. So I convinced my mom and Jamie to get me my own mortgage under their name. And um, yeah, so we looked for a while, like a few months, and we finally found a property in Hamilton. We ran the numbers, it looked good. So we got a mortgage and then I took possession of it in late December of last year. So I was only 14, it was, it was a pretty cool thing. Most of my friends didn't really understand it, but everybody that I've met thinks it's like really cool that I did that. And uh, so currently I'm, project managing all the renovations we have demo crews going in it's almost fully gutted now and it's it's been a bit of a roller coaster over the last almost a year but I mean it's a good living experience um and so yeah I did all of that in like three and a half just under four years um so my property 22 Grand Ave it's I, as I said it's been a bit of a roller coaster but we're starting to get it done and underway. So we're adding a sixth unit because it's a zone five flat or a zone six flex, but there's only five units in it right now. So we're taking out the basement, we're putting the floors down, we're adding a sixth unit in there to get more cash flow. Um, we're modernizing it, making it more open concept, living space in all units because it wasn't great. The floors were like super uneven, everything was just old and dirty. So we're just kind of boosting it up, making it newer. Um, it's in a good location, but the whole streets just kind of need to touch up. Um, we're increasing all the rent. Lot before it, we were getting just a few hundred dollars. So I think we're looking at like just over a thousand dollars for each unit, which is pretty nice. Um, we're adding rentable garages. There's three garages out back behind the property that everybody could just use. So we're going to put a lock on them and let people rent them out for, from us for a few bucks a month. Um, we're adding ductless heating so we don't have to pay for it and just to keep the cost down a bit. And then we're separating all the utilities so it's not under one bill and we don't have to pay for all of it. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, in my private lending, that's basically what I do for now. Um, that's where I make most of my money right now. That's what I'm most interested in right now. Um, so as I said, I lended all that and I have, I think $6,000 right now lended and I, I can lend more if I need to. Um, I'm earning passive income while I sleep, which is pretty cool. I'm making a few bucks a month just for giving people my money that I'm not going to use anyways. Um, so I use private lending to purchase my own property. We, me and my mom went on a zoom call and she presented her deal and I presented mine and everybody liked mine more. <laughs> And um, I think we raised like 400K or something in 
like 48 hours, which was, that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I've used private lending a lot in my career, I guess you could say. And I, I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I'm using private lending to cover all the renovation costs. Um, and there's been a lot of them. <laughs> We've had a lot of setbacks and stuff, but it's, it's still working good. Um, um, uh, we'll be paying out all the lenders at the time of refinance or if I decide to sell it, which I think I will. Um, and we'll have anywhere between 30 and 100K in the bank after we refinance it, which is pr pretty cool. Um, I can purchase another property with the money I make or I can reinvest in private lending. So my financial mentors were, has given me all the knowledge I have as obviously my parents, but uh, Robert Kiyosaki, I wrote or I read a bit of the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. I read the Rich Dad for Teens. We have like really competitive cash flow games at night. Um, Scott McGillivray, Michael Saracini, we've been to the Keyspire events. I've met both of them. They're great people. I absolutely love them. Um, and Tyson George, who's the teenager that got me into investing, and uh, he's doing great on his own right now. So my why, obviously, I have a reason that I want to do it. So I love fishing. We love deep sea fishing. I did it for, I think it was like my 14th birthday. Caught the biggest fish. It was great. We ate it. Absolutely love it. Um, I love playing hockey. So I want to be able to you know, spend time on my own with family, friends, whenever I can, not have to worry about it. Um, um, my mom is obsessed with our pugs, so I promised her that when she gets old, I'll put her in an old age home or retirement home. It's really nice, and I'll give her a pug, because, I don't know. <laughs> um, I want to eventually own a resort in the Caribbean or a property in the Caribbean where I can make money off of it, but I can still go whenever I want. Um, I absolutely love it. It's great. It's warm. It's nice water. I love snorkeling. I love diving. Just something I've always wanted to have. Um, I want to live in Canada. I love Canada. It's great. My mom doesn't. She absolutely hates the snow and hates the winter, but I love it. I don't know why she doesn't, but I don't know. And I want to travel the world. We've, I've been all over the world. I've been to Africa a few times. We have big plans. We were supposed to be on a trip this summer, but it got canceled because of the whole virus. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I absolutely love traveling, and that's something I want to do for as long as I possibly can. Yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you all for listening. And uh, yeah. Great job, Aaron. Great job. Thank you so much for, for starting us off and kicking us off right there. And uh, I've got to say, it's amazing, right? Listening to Aaron and hearing his aspirations, right? As a young teenager, where his mindset is and where he's about to go, it, it's, it's just inspiring. So Thanks very much, Aaron. Great job and uh, way to hack on your mom from time to time. Uh, and yeah, I agree. Canada's a great place to live. Um, and we've got Jamie and Leslie right now joining us. So go ahead, guys. Go ahead and, uh, and give us the big opening. Yeah, thanks everybody for, uh, for being on today. Let's start there. Um, Jamie's just going to pull up our, our presentation. Uh, we're not going to take, take very long because we're definitely not the stars of the show here. So um, we want you to uh, really get a lot out of our uh, team today. So that's what we're, uh, we've all come here for. So uh, sorry, Jamie's just I'm gonna do the screen having... share here. <laughs> we're not technical sorry, people. I had to switch over from Aaron's. There we go. Um, okay, so we are uh, Jamie and Leslie Collard. Um, we started our journey back in uh, 2016. Uh, so we, we actually um, started with uh, Keyspire. So Keyspire uh, is owned by uh, Scott McGillivray and Michael Saracini. And um, just a quick little story is we're HGTV junkies. And, um, you know, every time Scott McGillivray would have uh, income property on, I kept saying to Jamie, we can do this. It's fine. We'll do it. Like, I know I can do this. And he was hesitant. Um, <laughs> Jamie always takes bit. some convincing. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they uh, they had this uh, two-hour session that McGillivray was actually coming. 
to the actual building that I worked in as a probation officer at the time. And um, uh, it was just an information session about their coaching program and or their education program. So uh, we decided to go and that like that started our journey into uh, real estate, eh? Yep. So we became members in um, 2016, I think September 2016, so four years ago, and uh, bought our first rental property, this tiny little gray one in February of 2017. It's like 500 and, or sorry, 650 square feet. We fully renovated it for like $15,000 and then pulled out uh, almost 50, I think it was like 55,000 55, or something like that. So it bought our, our next property there, the duplex. Um, so throughout the, the past four years, we've had a ton of education. We're education junkies, to be honest. Uh, so we, uh, we are still members of Keyspire. Um, we've also done, uh, did the training with Dave DeVoe. Yep. Um, we had purchased those two properties and then we found out that, uh, the bank told us no, and it kind of deterred us and we didn't know where to go from there because we thought the bank knew everything, but <laughs> we thought we'd do some joint venture training to, you know, maybe purchase some more properties and, and yeah it and worked we did. it yeah. worked we found out later that the bank was wrong we could yeah. buy more but <laughs> don't believe the bank yeah uh and then uh we do go to, to meetups and a bunch of uh real estate investment conferences um we still do some commercial uh we have a commercial coach uh john carter out in um uh, edmonton and uh we meet with him regularly about multifamily still um and then we are members of the Seven Figure Altitude Mastermind. Um, they're in the uh, the states, but a great group. So uh, here we are, four years later, and right now we have 160 units in Canada. Um, primarily, so right now we invest in um, Ontario, primarily, um, but our focus is now just on uh, commercial multifamily, and uh, we we look at uh, the any buildings that we can burr, um, but we're also looking at uh, new construction and land development. Uh, so the structure of our deals has been uh, very different, right? No, yeah. I, I don't think we have, I guess we have a couple deals that are, are the same, same, but not not often. So some, some of our properties we own 100%. Um, we have a bunch with joint ventures, some with shareholders, uh, we often use private lending for our deals and um, a bunch of creative financing. And uh, that's kind of why we're bringing our team to the table today, because we're going to touch on a bunch of this stuff. Um, one of the questions that we often get is, well, we get a lot of financing questions, a lot of questions about where we find our deals. So um, we'll be talking about that throughout the day. And um we get questions we get a lot of questions about private lending so there's different structures that you can take and jamie and i will uh touch on that a little bit later today yeah everybody needs a power team somebody that's smarter than you yeah. done bigger deals more experience um and just can take some of the workload off of you um that's what we're here today for um to t show everybody how we've done it and introduce you to our teams so i mean if you feel like these people are on the same level as you, that, you know, they're going to help you up your level, by all means, reach out to them. Yeah, for sure. Um, so something about scaling. So we, we get asked a lot how we've scaled so quickly. And the, the easiest answer I can say is that uh, we do our own job and we let our team do their job. So, um, you know, my job is to run numbers, look at deals, uh, see what we want to invest in. And then we used to do our own renovations, but now my job is to just make sure that all of the renovations are going smoothly. So those are the jobs that I do. I don't, um, you know, I'm not going and picking up uh, renovation supplies. I'm not, um, you know, if, if my team, our realtors run a bunch of numbers for us now that we trust them and know them and know that their numbers are 100% on, I don't rerun their numbers. So I only do the jobs that 
I have to do and I let my team just help us out and, and that's why they're part of our team. Um, and we only do what we're good at now. So we used to try to do everything and I'll tell you we were terrible at paperwork. Yeah. We hate it. We like we argue <laughs> doing it because it's just one of those things that stresses us out. So we we're hiring. We've hired uh, you know a virtual assistant who's been amazing, um, and uh, we've just finished interviewing to have an executive assistant come in and uh, do all that paperwork stuff for us now. So um, that's really going to let us scale up much quicker. And uh, we've created teams that work independent. Uh, so meaning that they don't need us to do their job. So, um, you know, our project managers, they all have their own, uh, job sites that they are in charge of. They know what our expectations are and they, they know that they have to perform. Right. Yep. Um, our realtors know what kind of properties we're looking for and, um, they bring us the deals that work for us. They don't bring us the deals that we don't we're not going to be interested in. So they vet everything before they even bring it to us. So that's, that's amazing. Um, and then we have mortgage brokers, right? So our mortgage brokers um, look at the deals and they bring us uh, the different options. And um, I'm not going to, you know, I don't sit here and rack my brain about the way that I'm going to structure a mortgage because that's my mortgage brokers responsibility. Yeah. So they'll bring us the best option and we'll go from there. Yep. And just building relationships. So um, we've based our, our uh, company off of honesty and integrity and um, building relationships to us has been really, really important. So everybody that's a member of our team, we expect them to also build their company based on honesty and integrity. So the, the people that we have around us, we, we trust them fully and completely. Um, and that includes, you know, our private lenders, um, you know, our, I mean, our lawyer, our realtors, mortgage brokers, anybody that we're working with, if we're working with them, we've, we've vetted them very, very carefully. And, uh, and we know that they are, um, you know, going to take care of not only us, but anybody else that we refer them, uh, refer to them. Um, so some takeaways for today, we want you to ask questions, like get all your questions answered today. Yeah. Um, and if it's something that you, um, you know, that we can't answer today, or it's a very specific to your own situation, then book, book times to meet with our team members. Um, these, you know, everybody that's on here today is amazing. So you can get your questions answered and, um, you know, Hopefully, by the end of this, if you don't have somebody on your power team, you will after today. Yep. You got to uh, focus on your goals. I mean, yeah. you need to decide what you want to do and start putting that into action. Let's just take one step at a time and it'll get you to where you need to go. Um, if you want to buy a six unit building, I mean, that's what you need to get your realtors to look for. Yep. Be very specific in what you want to do and you will get there. And then be ready to take action. Yep. Yep. So um, take, I mean, we take action every single day. Um, we have, uh, we have vision boards. Um, I have my weekly goal set out. Um, we have project management software and, and it has our top 10 items of every week that we need to do. Um, so, you know, our whole, our whole day is spent um, taking action. And every single time we sit down in one of these conferences, um, we do have takeaways and we, we actually put it into practice, right? Yeah. So um, try to come into the day with that mindset that you're going to take at least one thing away to help you build your team and scale your business. Okay. That was fantastic, Jamie and Leslie. So we do have a couple of questions that have just popped up right here. Yeah, and yeah. Aaron's still available. We've got, uh, we've got two for him and we've got one for you. So I'll start off with yeah. you. See if Aaron's available. We got uh, Kyle coming up at 9.30, so five minutes right now. But the first question, this one's coming from uh, Nicolette, and she says, how many mortgage brokers do you work with? And do you ask each of them to, quote unquote, pitch on each deal? Um, so we have, right now we're working with, we have uh, three mortgage brokers that we're working with. So um, do we ask him to pitch on each deal? Not, no, no, we don't. So you can, I mean, 
we just, you know, we have a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think we need to, you know, spread it out a little bit. So we have, I don't know if ever anybody could keep up with us sometimes, but, uh, uh, you know, some of the bigger deals that we're, we're working on, um, we, we have uh, another guy that uh, the 4M guys have worked with on, on huge deals. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of who we were looking at bringing those deals to. Um, Kyle Ford's team is insanely and creative. Like, um, he's going to be on here and he'll talk about some of those things. So, um, and then, you know, also use Butler Mortgage out of... Um, uh, I think they're Hamilton and uh, Burlington. Burlington or something, but um, we used Dan Patton and we we used him for residential and we just love the guy to death. So uh, he's now doing some commercial stuff. So we've been, we've been trying that out because um, he's new into the commercial game, right? And commercials about building relationships. So we're, we're seeing how that goes as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, we definitely, you do need more than one mortgage broker um, because any mortgage broker will tell you that if they can't get a deal done, then it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen with another mortgage broker, right? Like there's different relationships in the business. So yeah, for sure. Great stuff, hey, Leslie. Go ahead. Thank you very much. So just keep an eye, we're at 927. So Aaron, thanks for coming back. We did have a question that, that uh, came up a little bit earlier here. So it was from Michael Conrad. Uh, and Michael's question was, he says, um, what made your presentation better than your mom's? I, no I want to know too. <laughs> I love Mike. <laughs> okay, so think about that one, right? We can always come back to it after break and, and really, and really rock the crowd with that one. Um, Grant Green had a question for Aaron as well here, um, and it says, "Awesome, awesome, inspirational story, Aaron. Thank you for sharing your journey." Two questions: What would you tell other teenagers in terms of what they should invest in real estate, and how can they get started? So that's the first question. And the second one is what lessons have you learned through recent challenges and what would you do differently uh, knowing what you know now? So that's always the question, right? It's the hindsight 2020 question. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Start with the first one. Um, so I would recommend people like younger people start with private lending because it's a lot easier. Yeah. And you know, you can just, if you have three, four five thousand dollars $5,000 and you're not going to use it, you don't want to spend it. You can, Give it to somebody that needs to buy property or needs to use it and they can pay you back monthly and you'll still make money off of it um that's what i like to do i i'm doing it right now i absolutely love it it's super easy um and what was the second question what was the second question sorry <laughs> where, the second question where is, what would you do differently right oh, in terms oh, of the do? lessons oh. and the challenges that you've learned uh, looking back what would you do differently? um i would have not bought that house. <laughs> um, I probably would have got, probably would have gotten renovations started quicker because there was a lot of delays on that, and it's just been like a big mess with that, with this property especially. Yep. Um, we've had like, we've how long have we waited for permits and stuff like half well, a year yeah. right now? Half a year, yeah, at least. It, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a big issue and like we had squatters and stuff so I think probably starting to get renovations and just like get in and get action started and done quicker would have probably been a good idea yeah awesome that's a great that's a great answer Aaron and thank you for those insights